What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, coach of your Montreal MyLotic, bringing you our week two battle for the BBR. Today, we are facing off against the commissioner of the Brejex Battle Royale, made it Pokemaster coach of the Kentucky Torcats. Now, I'm kind of worried for this matchup. Uh, we actually had a better matchup last time, and we still lost the game. And partly it's because, honestly, I didn't play phenomenally. Uh, I really choked it in a few different points, and that really sucks because I, I should have done a lot better, especially with the team I had. I was so well prepared. My front office did a really amazing job of being able to give me a hand with the, with the build and preparation. So I'm, I'm kind of disappointed with that. But this is a new week. We are trying to get our first win on the board. Unfortunately, we are playing against someone who has their first win, so we are going to have to make them come down to our record to make it so that we can win this game. But looking at this team, it's a very scary roster our opponent has to deal with. And at the same time, you guys can probably see we made a couple trades. Yeah, so I, dro I dropped the Durant and I dropped the Haunter. Um, Durant was literally only on the squad because it fit a speed tier and it was a way for me to get rid of Psychic types. At the end of the day, I feel like my team is still really strong and Durant wouldn't really have helped me out much this week, maybe except for to deal with like a Swords Dance, or sorry, a Dragon Dance or like an Autotomize and a Krozma, and that's pretty much it. Even then, it could have carried Protect and been just fine. Porygon Z on the other hand pairs fucking amazingly with Urshifu and with Cinderace and with Mamoswine. My team is offense, physical offense, like crazy, which means Porygon Z will come in, click buttons because it gets a free download boost because the majority of my Pokemon, or my opponent's Pokemon rather, are going to be physically defensive. Emolga is there because it fits the speed tier. It's also cheaper, which is very nice. It's at 103 base speed, which is perfect because Cinderace is at 119, and then the next fastest Pokemon is, I believe, like 118, which is Hawlucha, which would probably be running Adamant anyways because it has terrain. So 117 Pokemon, like Salazzle, cannot run Modest against my team. If I do see something like that, I can always run a max speed Emolga and then paralyze it with Nuzzle or something like that, or Knock Off or whatever, because Emolga gets a lot of really good support moves. It's another Defogger for me. It gets recovery, it's a ground immunity, it's an electric immunity, it's very nice, I'm very happy to, I'm very excited and happy, ex happy, <laughs> I, wow I can't believe I said that, to have Emolga on the squad because, I mean, how often do you see an Emolga get drafted, let's be real. Now I am holding mid, kind of waiting a little bit, so I do want to get this through this a little bit quicker. His team is very scary, Necrozma is threatening, he's got the sand core with the drill and the gigalith, Sculpey is one of the scariest mods for my team to deal with, it's just extremely powerful, if he runs dual stab plus earthquake and swords dance, he's pretty much got me beat. And honestly, there's really not much I can do about that. I do have a good bit of priority, which is nice. But at the, at the end of the day, this Pokemon is going to hit so hard, so I got to be very careful. Gigalith is a lot better in this matchup than you'd expect. Yes, I have Mamoswine and Roserade and Copper Aja, and I have like Urshifu as well. But this thing kind of walls Porygon Z, which otherwise would just completely demolish my opponent's team. So it's a bit of a problem there. If I can get that thing weakened down, Porygon Z can just win the game outright for me, which is amazing. Vaporeon is not the biggest threat to me. It's an immunity to water types for the Urshifu, which is nice. Um, I, because I was debating running a sub bulk upset against it, unfortunately, it didn't really pan out. His team doesn't really, like, it, I can really get up both the bulk up and a substitute, there we go, while staying healthy and doing as much damage as I wanted to because I'm missing out on a Life Orb, a Mystic Water, or a Choice Band, something like that to kind of boost my attack. Wimsicott's annoying. It outspeeds everything on my team except for the Cinderace. Outspeeds the Urshifu, smacks it with either one of its stab moves kind of annoying, outspeeds the Mamoswine, hits it with super effective grass moves, basically just a problem. The good news is I have Rosary, which kind of walls it, which is fantastic. We then got to deal with a Mill Tank, which is very fast, it's pretty fast at base 100 speed, which is so surprising for this Pokemon, but it's got tons of HP, it's a Rocker, it's a Cleric as well, uh, Milk Drink for recovery too. Uh, my team does have a great fighting type, but at the end of the day, he's got pretty good fighting type switch-ins, so I'd probably go for a Surging Strikes against the Mill Tank, if anything, but it is what it is. Rabbit Spin is his uh, name of the game when it comes to Hitmonchan. That thing is pretty bulky on the special side, a lot more bulky than you think it would be, and it's got a lot of good uh, offensive attacks. I don't really expect it to come too much. It came to one of the mocks, but it'd be decent because I don't have the best fighting type switchings against my opponent's roster because Gardevoir is a very bad Pokemon to deal with, but what are you gonna do? More Pico came to two of the three mocks I had, which is kind of crazy, but this thing actually hits pretty hard with Aura Wheel. It's got Parting Shot as well. I could see it be definitely a bit of an annoyance against my roster, which is completely fair, but again, I feel like I have decent ways to handle it. It's not that bulky, meaning my Mammal Swan's Ice Shark can take it off pretty easily, and I have a lot of priority in this week. And then finally, there's a Noctowl. I don't have great flying switchings. Copper Aja, which again, Tinted Lens. I have my Molga, again, Tinted Lens, and then that's it. Everything else doesn't want to take flying type attacks, so it could be very scary, but it doesn't boost its speed, which is fantastic, and it's weak to ice shards, so that's amazing there too. Now, let's go ahead and jump into it. The first member of our team this week is obviously going to be our Urshifu here, with Surging Strikes, Drain Punch, Aqua Jet, and Bulk Up, carrying the Mystic Water. This is the exact set I was going to be running if I had gone with Bulk Up, except I have Aqua Jets instead of Substitute. 
and uh, I have Mystic Water instead of Leftovers. This set has speed for Excel Drill. It has bulk to break through my opponent's team very effectively. At plus one with the Mystic Water, we actually 2 kill my opponent's entire roster, which is amazing. I will definitely take that. Alcajet lets me revenge uh, the Excel Drill in Sand, so I don't have to live like an Earthquake or something. I can keep my health pretty high. And at plus one, like I said, we 2 kill the Max Defense Necrozma with certain tricks. I'm definitely expecting a very bulky Necrozma to come or a Dragon Man set to come. So there is that, and it's a very scary set both ways. Close combat could have been a definite possibility, but I felt getting recovery was still very, very useful with Drain Punch. And at the end of the day, the only thing I'm clicking Drain Punch against is going to be like, I don't know, the Vaporeon, maybe the Mill Tank. That's pretty much it. Everything else can't really take a certain strikes. So I'm going to probably go for that more often than not. And yes, it only has 8 PP. I just kind of have to deal with that. Our next mod is going to end up being our Cinderace here, which is very important to the squad this week. We're running Life Orb with Pyroball, U-Turn, Sucker Punch, and Low Kick. None of that's I guess, Twisted Spoon shenanigans we had last week. I get it was a very important set for me to run. I did not play it well. I just should have attacked the Damp Palisand when I had a plus one boost, but I didn't, and it ended up costing me big time against it. But this Pokemon has speed for Whimsicott Creeping Emolga. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't have to be super bulky or super uh, fast, I mean, because the Whimsicott isn't the greatest special attacker, and both of its stabs are resisted by my Cinderace, and I can pretty much just U-turn out whenever I want to. I get it gets Stun Spore, but I'd probably just go hard into... Actually, you no, know, I, I would just I would just definitely go hard into the Roserade against the Whimsicott because I completely wall it. Pyroball for just great damage, Low Kick for the Gigalith, Sucker Punch for priority against the Necrozma fit setup, the Drill and Sand, whatever it may be, U-turn for momentum. The Vaporeon is the only thing that really can take hits from this thing effectively because I'm running Low Kick. Originally, I was running Choice Band, and I had Flare Blitz on instead of Low Kick, but I kind of got locked into something I didn't want to be too often, and low kick will allow me to hit the uh, Gigalith for a lot more damage, allowing my Porygon Z to completely go in. Moving on, our next pick is going to be our Rose Raid, making its season debut with Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Stun Spore, and Spikes. Originally, I had Synthesis over Stun Spore, but I have to go with Stun Spore here because in a Dragon Nest Necrozma can just win the game outright. My Dark Type Switches are not great at all. So if he runs like, I don't know, uh, Photon Geyser, Heat Wave, and then dragon dance and uh moonlight or something or even he can he can even run i guess a weakness policy set or whatever just get that extra boost on its attack i have the stun spore there to paralyze it stop it in its tracks and now we can use to get up three dragon dances to be able to outspeed my rose raid because rose raid already outspeeds a adamant or modest necrozma and it's paralyzed so it's going to need to double it just to get back to normal and then plus one to outspeed so that's very important very valuable information for me to have sludge bomb does significant damage to a lot of my opponent's team because rose raid does have 125 special attack and even though it only has 12 EVs in special attack and it is a modest nature it still hits so damn hard which is amazing speed for admin necrozma like i had said and this is a very strong set against the whimsicott and the necrozma because of my payapa berry and uh, also against the vaporeon because of my giga drain and i didn't say it before but this set does take a plus one jolly necrozma's photon geyser or a modest necrozma's or plus one modest necrozma's uh, photon geyser so basically takes the physical or special side of it that's kind of what i had the hp is not 288 that's a mistake it's 228 moving on we have our next set which is going to be our emolga here with nuzzle u-turn knockoff and roost with the heavy duty boots this is a very important set for this week because it paralyzes everything if i can paralyze my opponent's team i'm in a really good spot we take one plus one jolly necrozma's geyser and we also take one life orb drills rock slide and uh, again, on this set, we have speed for a modest Necrozma, and the rest is put into our special defense because we want to paralyze everything. This is going to be my lead in this matchup. Roost for longevity, heavy duty boost to come in on hazards, knock off to get rid of items. But the main goal is nuzzle. If I see a leftovers or something on the Necrozma, I am clicking knock off. I'm getting, or I'm clicking nuzzle. If I don't see an item, I'm clicking knock off because I want to get rid of my opponent's, um, what is the thing I'm looking for? Uh, Rocky Helmet, that's it. Uh, actually, you know, I probably would just go for Nuzzle first, just in case he goes for Dragon Nest and he's a weakness policy set. So I would go for Nuzzle, find out if he's Helmet or not, and then if he's not Helmet, I can just proceed as normal. So that is what we're going to be going with. It's good to know that I did that in advance because don't want to make that mistake in-game. Moving on, we have our next small, which is going to be our Porygon Z, which is absolutely amazing. If you guys missed our Week 1 battle for the GDL, first of all, what are you doing? That goes up on Mondays, and we had an amazing Week 1 against Frosted, so make sure to go and check that out. I'll have a link in the description and in the cards at the top right of your screen. But Porygon Z in that game was phenomenal. And I ran a very similar set to this. I ran T-Bolt, Agility, Ice Beam, and Recover. This time I'm running Tri-Attack over T-Bolt because my opponent's team has two normal resists, Extra Drill and Gigalith. Obviously, I would love to have a fire fighting ground move to hit them super effectively, but Porygon Z doesn't get them because there's no hidden power anymore. So because of that, Ice Beam will have to do. And the reason why I'm going with Ice Beam over something else, like Shadow Ball or Dark Pulse, one Ice Beam is 90 base power, which is nice, there's a 10% chance to freeze, and yes, I get it. I'm not relying on this 10% chance, but I'm saying like, hey, it's there at least, which is very threatening. My opponent does have to deal with that, so I have to make sure they keep that in mind. It also makes so that if my opponent's Necrozma comes in, 
I'm not proccing a weakness policy or anything. He can't get a weakness policy off on this Pokemon. We are running download, so if my opponent has a Pokemon that's more physically defensive, and I do have a lot of momentum on my team, then if, I, if they have a Pokemon that's more physically defensive, I bring in my Porygon Z and I just start clicking buttons at plus one because we are life four boosted as well. Speed for Admin Excadrill, or sorry, Jolly Excadrill, and in Sand, with Agility up, we actually outspeed that, which is kind of what I brought it for last time. Recover allows me to set up on the Vaporeon, uh, on some Whimsicott's, Miltank, maybe if it's not running Thunder Wave or something. The big thing is Gigalith kind of walls me. Skullpeed is a bit of a problem as well, but if I get my agility up, I actually outspeed him if he's at plus one. So if he decides to go for a protect, that's fine. I just click try attack. Life or plus one try attack is going to nuke him anyway, so I'm very comfortable doing that. Our next mon is going to be our final mon, which is our Mammal Swine here, which is extremely important in this game because one, it just hits so hard, and two, gives me more knockoff, gives me more priority. Earthquake and Ice Shard hit his team for absolutely phenomenal damage. My opponent has, what, there's one resist to ground and then one immunity and both of his resists and his immunities are weak to ice shards so that's fantastic and we have knockoff for getting rid of necrozma's helmet earthquake does significant damage to it anyways stealth rock for hazards which is fantastic and it's another fail safe for the extra drill because i know that thing does get pretty fast so i can always go for ice shard and i'll speed it and do amazing damage to it and then come in with my urshifu and ko it with the aqua jet which is absolutely huge it could definitely be pasho berry i have to keep that in mind but if he is pasho berry He's not a threat to my Urshifu unless he has the plus two, which is important to note. And uh, I believe I can, I might be able to live. I actually don't think so. I was thinking I might be able to live a uh, neutral Jolly Iron Head from the Exodrill, my Mammal Swine, but I don't think that's the case. Regardless, Emolga is immunity to ground, and it's a resist, I believe a four times resist to steel, so it's a perfect wall to its dual stab. It does get Rock Slide, of course. I have to be aware of that, but I don't think he's going to think I'm going to bring Emolga to the first week. But that is our team. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the battle. Uh, I am holding up mid long enough, so. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into it. All right, everyone, we are back. Um, so looking at the team that he brought, he brought Vaporeon, Miltank, Excadrill, Gigalith, Scolipede, and Necrozma. Okay, definitely a very scary, scary team. I'm leading off with Molga. That was my lead of choice. Um, you can see all my mods with the Life Orb. I have three Pokemon with the Life Orb right now. Fucking hell. Um, yeah, because... If he decides to lead off with anything predicting me to lead off with Urshifu, expecting to want to lead off with Gigalith to prevent rocks up, then that's a definite problem. So, yeah, man, I gotta lead off with Emolga here, and uh, just just hope. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, my opponent's team is so good, it's so, so scary. Like, just Necrozma is such a threat to me. Skullpeed is just terrifying in general. His team does a really good job of beating down Steel types, which Excadrill does pretty well. The only thing is, Pokemon like Skarmory really, really are tough for him to deal with because he doesn't have a fire type, I believe. Yeah, I don't think he's a fire type. And his electro type is more Pico, so that's a definite problem there. Uh, but other than that, still, the Krozma hits super hard with Heat Wave, so he's got a very strong team, but I'm, uh, I'm nervous for this. I am nervous for this one. This is going to be a tough game. So we shall see what... Uh, we'll see. It says zero on the clock, so I don't know what's going on. I kind of feel like we're going to DC in this game, just how long it's been taking us. So... So anyways, have fun to my opponents, and uh, let's get this done. All right. Wow, I'm so nervous for this. It's like, I don't want to fall down to 0-2. I really want to do well here. A lot of you guys are our viewers for this league, and you guys are coming over from uh, from CBAT's stream, from other channels, part of the league, and I want to make sure that I can really bring you guys some really solid competition. And uh, yeah, but he leaves off with Miltank here, which I am definitely cool with. That is probably going to be his rocker. Uh, I want to go for a Nuzzle here. I don't see a need to go for anything. Actually, no, I think a knockoff here is going to be the best play uh, in case he goes into the Excadrill, as we are already taking some time. I know this is usually a, kind of like a hallmark of land mode, but it is what it is. I'm going to knock off here, get rid of a Rocky Helmet, get rid of a Leftovers, a Choppleberry maybe. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to move my Emolga right over a little bit. That's, that's too much. Let's go this way. There we go. <laughs> Minute details that only really I can see. But I go for knockoff here. We do have speed. And we get rid of a leftovers. I'm cool with that as he goes for his rocks. If I with me, uh, we do find out this thing has rocks. I expect the rocks to be up on the field for the majority of the game against me. Um, I brought two forms of removal. I think my play here is going to be to go for a nuzzle now. Yeah. Because uh, if he goes hard into drill here, so be it. If he goes into anything else, it gets paralyzed, which is nice for me. We'll see what he wants to go into, though. And I, I imagine he might have the... What is it called? Um, the heal bell on the mill tank. But again, I have more power points, and I have roost. So unless he also has toxic, we can beat this thing. As uh, you go for nuzzle, we connect. 
and we're gonna paralyze this thing and we'll see what does he want to do here as he goes for seismic toss which I am fine with uh, I'm actually just going to wow it's so much damage it's 50 damage but like I only have 160 points of health I'm gonna go for a roost here whatever he wants to go for so be it uh, if seismic toss is the only attacking move that's fine with me it's gonna fire that off we'll see if he has a heal bell on his team as we roost up and what is he going to do he is going to go for Da, da, da. Oh, the seismic toss. All right, how much PvP does seismic toss have? 32. And Roost, I believe, only has 16, so we can't beat that. Uh, that's fine. I can just go... I kind of want to keep this thing healthy. Um, hmm. I'm going to go for another knockoff here. Like, really... Yeah, I'm going to go for another knockoff here. As he goes for another seismic toss. That's three down. Okay, so the good news is we take three of them, which is nice. I can then roost up, and he's definitely going to have milk drinks as his last move. I'm marking that down already. Uh, that's 100% happening. And at this point, I can kind of just wear this thing down a little bit, which is nice. Uh, force it to go for a milk drink. If it gets paralyzed, I can U-turn out into my Urshifu as he does go and switch out, and he goes into Gigalith here, which I am fine with. Okay. So Sandscreen comes out. As I roost up. And we'll see exactly what the drill wants to do to me. Uh, at this point, I think I'm going to go for a knockoff here because that way I can get rid of a potential Sash if this is a Sash Pokemon. I can get rid of a Helmet. I can get rid of Leftovers, a Soft Sand. So that's my play here. Obviously, he has a Rock move. Uh, it's definitely a possibility. But knockoff is a really smart play in my opinion. So I'm going to do that. As we get rid of an assault vest, as he goes for earthquake, and we are immune. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so this was definitely his check to Porygon Z, and I'm so happy we managed to get that. So I'm gonna go for a U-turn here, and I want to go into Roserade. I, how much does Mammal Swine take? All right, you know what? I think he's gonna be more defensive if anything. Uh, make sure there's only custom sets here. Uh, if I go to Mammal Swine and if I go Gigalith, This thing could get superpower. It does get superpower, I know that. But I don't think he's going to run. Just go straight for a superpower here. He's probably going to go for a rock move, if anything. And if he goes for a rock move against against my... Uh, what is it called? Yeah, U-turn is my play. If he goes for a rock move against my Mammoth Swine, that's fine with me. Um, it's going to do 35 to 43 if he gets three hits with Rock Blast and he's got no investment in attack. And Earthquake will neuter this thing. It's going to do so much damage. I am positive this thing is a more offensive, uh, especially defensive Pokemon, because of the Assault Vest and the Sand... So he can't let this thing get chipped down. Because of that, I could probably just go straight for uh, my own rocks, actually. That may be a possibility. Um, I might want to save that for when the mill tank comes in. The good news is, against the mill tank, it sounds like I have a very guaranteed switch in to my Emolga. And another positive is, it doesn't sound like he has Heal Bell. Unless he kind of doesn't want to get Toxic Salt out. But I'm happy with this so far. But yeah, uh, a, ro a roosting was definitely a really solid play that I could have made there, and he was trying to get the prediction. Probably would have destroyed me, honestly, but he did not catch me, which I will definitely take. But yeah, Earthquake, if he's max HP, 93 to 110. So that's going to be like a guaranteed KO if he's just max HP with his uh, his current HP right now. So yeah, um, let's see. I'm I'm really nervous for this. So far, it's, it's gone well. It's just, I want to keep this Pokemon, like kind of healthy I want to keep I really need to keep the uh, yeah I need, I need to keep this thing Pokemon I need to keep this Pokemon healthy for sure and the good news is I believe if he decides to make Miltank a switch in here then that's fine with me so um, hmm the question is because I know if I I don't know what's taking so long but uh, I'm going to go for a knockoff with my Mammal Swine reason for that is because I really want to make sure that I can uh, get rid of any item that's going to come in. Because I don't think he's going to stay in with this thing if he's seeing my, my Mammoth Swine come out. He could expect my Urshifu here. I resist the Rock move, so it's definitely a possibility, but I'm not going for it as I definitely feel like we're going to DC this game. Oh my god. I'd never seen that, uh, that server mid... Server is lagging. 
All right. Let's go Mammal Swine. And let's see what he wants to do. Yeah, this server is a booty. Yeah, it honestly, it honestly even looks like it's kind of choppy, the footage. Like the sandstorm looks kind of choppy, which is... Like, I've chosen. I don't know what it's taking so long. I mean, there we go. Mammal Swine comes out, finally. And we're going to get some good information now. As he goes for Rock Slide, he connects, and Rock Slide does 162 down to 96. Okay. And that kind of makes sense, I guess, um, based on him being more specially defensive. Okay. I want to go for an Earthquake here, because he has no switch ins, he has no resistances. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go for that Earthquake here. And if he goes into the Mill Tank, I'm going to fire off my Rocks. We'll see what he wants to do. We do have, all right, we're jolly, yes, jolly, I get it, but we are max attack with a life orb. I know I said I wanted to go for knockoff here, but mill tank comes out, which is fine. And I can freely get on my own rocks here as well. He's gonna get chipped down a lot. That's great damage, I will definitely take that. He sees that we're life orb. Um, I don't really feel like I need to keep the mouse mine necessarily just around, around. It doesn't need to. It needs to, like, if I can get up rocks now, that's huge. So I'm going to go for the stealth rock here. And getting off these rocks is amazing. And this is big because at this point, it's looking like he's not going to have an answer to my Roserade down the wire. So I go for my rocks here. Is he going to get paralyzed? I believe he's now 0 for 3 or 0 for 4 on paralysis. It'd be great if he did. As he is fully paralyzed. Thank you. Sandstorm subsides though. So that's big because it means the extra drill cannot come in and just revenge kill me. And I get a free earthquake here and I get a K and I get a KO, which is amazing. So let's go for another earthquake. You know what would be kind of cool? If his drill was on a balloon. That'd be really cool. But I imagine he's probably just gonna go into the Vaporeon. Not now, obviously, but right as his Pokemon dies. So goodbye to the Mill Tank, and Mammal Swine picks up the first KO of the match for us. Amazing. So that's huge. We're at 60 HP, which means you can take one hit from the... Oh, I was going to say Mill Tank Seismic Toss, but Seismic Toss on Mill Tank is gone now. So I'll take that for sure. Oh boy. Everything is at max HP right now. The good news is we outspeed everything except for the Scolipede. Against the Scolipede, though, I'm firing off an Ice Shard. Uh, he's taking rocks on entry, so unless he's running Heavy Duty Boots, he brings an extra drill. Okay. So... Um, do I feel like I have enough to take care of the Gigalith? I feel like I do, so I'm going to go ahead and fire off. No, what am I saying? Uh, ooh. Hmm. No, so if he goes for... I'm going to go into my Emolga here. He might go for Iron Head, so be it. We're not taking rocks. He might go for Spin. Iron Head. I'm fine with that. 120 down to 82. Is that Life Orb? Don't know yet. It is not Life Orb. Okay. Uh, time to do some quick calcs, some quick maths. All right. We have my opponent's Excadrill versus my Molga. My computer is so slow. Excadrill. Did not type that in properly at all. And the good news is we outspeed, unless he's got. Unless he's Choice Scarf. And even then. We'll take the hit. Okay, level 50. He has 42 points health, I believe, or 38 or something like that. So yeah, he's jolly. I believe he's jolly. Um, hmm. I want to roost here, but I think... I'm going to roost. I'm going to roost. I don't think he earthquakes. I think if anything, he goes hard into... Yeah, he goes hard into the Gigalith, if anything. Is that what he does? It is what he does. And he's taking 12% again. Which is fine. I can go hard into my Urshifu here. I feel like it's important though to keep it healthy. I don't want to go into Roserade. It's too important. Um, it's not weakened. This Pokemon isn't weakened down enough for Porygon. Because yeah, I do like 30% to a max special defensive Gigalith. 
Uh, hmm. What do I feel like is extremely important in this instance? Because I can U-turn. I can go into Mammal Swine. Hmm. I really want to keep this Pokemon around. It's very useful still. But so is Mammal Swine. No. I'm going to go for a U-turn here. I'm going to go into Mammal Swine because he probably will kill me. And if he does, when he does, because I there's rocks up, I don't resist it. Yeah. He's going to kill me here. Mammal Swine will, will go down, but it's okay. It got up rocks. It's, it killed the mill tank. It's worn down some Pokemon, which is very nice. I'm going to miss this Ice Shard. I really will. But I can get in Cinderace now pretty freely. Or actually, I can get in our sheep. Actually, no, Cinderace would be better. Cinderace would definitely be better. Oh, and we DC. All right, everyone. We're pretty much back to where we once were. Uh, basically, we just replayed it. Uh, we have a new server that we're using now, which is nice. I'm about to click Roost. I'm about to use Roost with I am Olga on the incoming Gigalith. Uh, so, have fun. Yeah, so one thing I did notice, which is important because I didn't notice it the last time, he's Mold Breaker on his Excadrill, which makes me think he's definitely Scarfed. So, I'm going to fire off a U-turn here. And I can go with my Mammal Swine, which is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty confident that he's Scarf, which is nice because I have my Amolga, which is a ground immunity. So he can't just freely go for Earthquake, and that's amazing. So we go for the U-turn, and uh, I don't think we're going to live with our Mammal Swine. The good news is we're actually at the exact same amount of HP that we should be at. Um, but yeah, we're going to take Rocks. We're going to take an Earthquake. or Unless he goes for Rock Slide and he misses, then... Mammal Swine goes down. If he does miss, that's going to be... Do you have no idea how big that is? Because I get a free kill. So Rockside comes out, and he misses. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. I kind of spoke that into existence. Yo, man, I'm really sorry. Um, That's so bad. That's that's absolutely huge. Because I can get a free Earthquake off now. And Earthquake decimates his team. That's absolutely massive. I'm really sorry, man. As he just sacks his, his Gigalith. Wow. So instead of instead of his Gigalith getting a KO on my Mammal Swine, the Mammal Swine claims its second KO of the game. And I believe if I do get a, an Oko this turn, which I don't think I will, then oh my god, that's, that's absolutely massive. Wow. Like I'm speechless because that's so big. Because um, PZ kind of just comes in now. If he gets an agility up on the on the uh, not the Porygon, the Porygon, then it's it's pretty much game. We outspeed Scarf Drill. We outspeed plus one Scolipede. We have plus one boost with the Life Orb. Oh my god. I feel really bad. In comes the Drill, though. I'm pretty confident this is Scarf. Um, I'm just going to go for an Ice Shard here. Wow. Wow. And if he goes for a Rock Slide, he goes for a Rock Slide. It means I can get into my Urshifu. And that's huge damage there. We live on one as he rock slides me. And he gets the KO. Okay. Does Porygon Z set up on this? Uh, Porygon Z against Exodrill. I'm pretty sure he's Scarf. Uh, rock slide, rock slide, rock slide, rock slide. Rock slide is 36 to 42 if he's max attack. Jolly. Um. How much does it do to Rose Raid? No, I can't go to Rose Raid. Hmm, I probably gain some phys uh, a yeah, I gain a ton of. Hmm, I want to go to Shifu here and go for a bulk up, but I don't think that's my best play. I should probably move Mammal Swine. Um, I'll do that after. Really debating what I do here. I can think I can just go hard for a uh, a tri attack with Porygon Z. Yeah, I'm going to do that because I have a sack in my... What happened? Alright, uh, we are back. I really don't remember what I was going to go into here. I think I was going to go into Porygon here, um, but can't remember. He went for Rock Slide, which isn't good. Um, yeah, Porygon's easy to be my play here. And we'll see. He's probably going to give me a boost in my physical attack, which, I mean, it is what it is. Download gives me a boost in... Attack. That's what I thought. Um, hmm. At this point, I feel like he's going to invade Vaporeon. Oh, and the way we have to play, by the way, if he does go into Vaporeon. Yeah, if he does go into Vaporeon, then that's fine. Whew. I think I'm going to Agility here.
Yeah, I'm going to do Agility here. Because I think he wants to keep this thing around. And Rock Slide, if he does stay in an attack, is going to do 36 to 42. So I'll be happy there. As he switches out, and he goes into Vaporeon. Okay. So, alright, so he's basically going to get 6% less than he normally would be. Um, he had to take a, a hit of rocks. I know he's light, uh, leftovers already. So, yeah, but it's okay. Uh, so Vaporeon is here. My keyboard will work. Vaporeon. So I know we're at neutral. Wow, it's not going to do very much, is it? That's insane. It does nothing. <sighs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. I want to switch out here. I should have gone for try attack. I didn't. I didn't. I should have. I should have caught that. Mm, I might have just wasted that shit. No, I think. I think going Emolga is fine here. I have my boots. He might go for Scald. If he goes for Ice Beam, he goes for Ice Beam. Um, Emolga's going to come out. I, I really didn't play that well. Wow. Scald is, wow, 45 to 53. Not smart, Matt. Shit. I'm going to Roost again. And if he burns me, like, I'm kind of screwed here. But the good news is he switches out. What does he go into? Excadrill. Okay. That's fine with me. I can knock off a Scarf, which is nice. I'm gonna Roost. And we live a hit, which is amazing. He can't lock himself into Earthquake either. That's not a possibility for him. And I can go for a knockoff here. Question is, do I want to? Yeah, because I don't need the agility. Yeah. So I'm going to knock off. He goes for Rock Slide, most likely. As he does. Yikes. Knock off, and we out. No, I don't think we outspeed him. We're at 132 speed. Excadrill. Again, I think he's going to be outspeeding my Mammal Swine. I should have probably crept for this. Um, Mammal Swine is... Gets to 145, so I think he's going to have enough speed for me. Um, if he goes for Rock Slide, he goes for Rock Slide. But I can go into Cinderace. <sighs> Fuck. I didn't play this well. Wow. Let's, uh... Let's do turn here. Let's U-turn here. I don't even think that was the right play. Only It only is if he decides to switch out here. And he did, I probably would have wanted a nuzzle, but he has speeds anyways. That's fine, okay. Yeah, so the only reason it would not have been fine is if he actually got, um... Ah, no, what is it? Uh, I can go hard to a Shifu here and click bulk up. Which is nice. You know, he's gone. Hmm. I'll just go into Porygon Z here. I did not play as well. Wow, I might have... I'm just going to move... Actually, no, I'll just put it back there, and I'll just make it gone. Um, I did not play that well. If I had just gone for Tri-Attack... Oh, man, I did not play that well. God, it's really throwing me off the fact that I'm not able to uh, just figure out what I want to do here. Let's try attack. So we're going to get the KO on the Exadrill, I believe. Oh, why did I go for try attack? Thank God I got the KO. Thank God. If I didn't get the KO, I'd have been so mad at myself. Oh, I'm, so, I'm in my head right now. I can't. This can't be happening. Like, I, I, know I, have a, I know I have a good lead here, and I've done well so far, but I'm really just... I'm not playing smart. Not playing smart at all. I should have ice beamed the drill. I should have actually. I could have doubled out into Vaporeon or something, but in comes the Scolipede. He's not boots. Okay. 
I want to keep this Pokemon around, but I can't go into anything else. So I gotta go for Tri Attack. He Mega Horns, he connects. Thank God he connected. Like, if he didn't connect, that would have been terrible. He's Life Orb, and he gets a speed boost. Okay. Good news is, Urshifu takes a hit. I guess this thing, uh, where is it? It is called Skullpeed. Let's see exactly how much damage this thing does to me. His Life Orb. If he's Adamant, Life Orb, Poison Jab does 44 to 53. So, I go into Urshifu. I might even want to click bulk up here. Because that plus one attack, we do 49 to 60% with jet. I'm going to get rid of Porygon Z here. This is gone. I can If I bulk up here, how bad is that for me? If he, no, I'm going to bulk up. Because I feel like he needs to keep this thing around because it outspeeds my Cinderace. As he just goes for Earthquake, which I'm okay with. 33, 37 to 44. Take that hit. I can bulk up. Plus one attack, plus one defense. If he Earthquakes, again, it'll do 24 to 30. And we, we it's a roll for us to KO right now anyways. Unless he's got a ton of bulk, which he might. He might. Oh, he just barely lives. Oh, I can't tell you how good it would have been to get off that damage without being taken that hit. But it's okay. Down goes the Skullipede, which is very nice. We are plus one. So if Vaporeon comes in, plus one, we do 39 to 47 to a max HP, max defense Vaporeon. So I will definitely take that. We recover back. More than what Skull's doing to us. So I'm going to fire off the Drain Punch here. We do huge damage. Oh, that's amazing. Urshifu is so good. What a strong Pokemon. He Scalds. Ah, he got the burn. That's big, because they can wish up on me. That's so big. Ah, damn it. I'm going to bulk up again. I imagine he's going to go for a wish here. As he scalds again. Oh, shit. Live? Oh, shit. Live the burn. 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 We're at plus two. We're burnt. It's going to do as much as a normal one would do. Live the burn. Yes. We are burned. We're not doing, we're not doing any damage to him. Wow. God, getting that, getting that burn was huge for him, but I can't complain. I mean, he, he got a scald miss on me. As he protects... Ah! Okay. Oh, we, I forgot. Oh, oh, thank God. Yo, I completely forgot about the ability, and so did he. And that means we're going to live this turn, and that means we're going to be able to get a KO on it. We're at plus two, and if he brings in his... That's... Yo. I apologize, I just muted something, because uh, I just smacked my mic. <laughs> That's so big. Oh, Drain Punch again. Then if he brings in his Necrozma. KO? Yes, it KOs. This Pokemon. Oh, this Urshifu. We are at plus two. We got our Mystic Water. He's max HP. Huh, it says if I'm burned. Hmm. I don't think it's going through the crit. I don't think the crit is working. 
on Showdown. Because Showdown is saying plus two, max attack admin, max attack jolly, mystic water, burned or shifu, will do 66 to 78. But it's a crit. So I should be fine. I'll just go for surging strikes here. We'll see what he wants to do to me. Because strikes should crit every turn, which means it should nullify the burn completely and give me the plus two. Oh, that's so much damage. I don't think it's enough, though, to get the KO. Yeah, it's not. So what is he going to do here? He is going to autonomize. I have Aqua Jet. And I have Sucker Punch on my Cinderace. And he is not leftovers. So let's go for Aqua Jet. Does Rashifu pick up its third KO of the match? Hey, there we go, our Shifu. Way to put in work. I know you got the thumbnail last week, but you put in more work this week. That is six kills on the season for our Shifu. Amazing. And a 3-0 win for us. We are now sitting at one win, one loss with a plus two differential. That is what I'm talking about. Way to go, team. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm not going to lie. The fact that he had to lose his Gigalith because of a miss, game changer. I'm not going to lie. The next time we play, because believe it or not, we're probably going to play again. Mid is likely going to make the playoffs. We're likely to make the playoffs. We'll play against each other at some point. It's probably going to happen. That Gigalith is a problem. The fact that it was a Salt Fest, huge. I put in so much work on this team. I'm happy that Roserade and Cinderace didn't hit the field. But I will say, if he decided to go for Scald instead of Protect, then Drain Punch would have not given me back enough HP to get the KO. I was so confident he was going to go for a Wish. But uh, he went for Protect there, and that really changed the game as well. Honestly, GG to mid... Thank you for being so patient. Honestly, guys, um, if there's any vi video, I would say I deserve a like on it. Mid and I both deserve likes on this video and on his video over there because we had tried three different times. We had two disconnects, and we managed to get this done. So, whew. oh, man. Guys, let me know. Urshifu, got to be the MVP of the season so far, right? Or do you think Amolga was? I mean, Amolga put in work this game. Oh, my God. That was incredible. If you guys like this video, make sure you leave a like on the video. Of course, comment as well what you thought of the video as well and the battle. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I do want to say thank you uh, to everyone who subscribed to the channel recently. We recently passed 750 subscribers, so huge thank you to you guys. I really appreciate it, and uh, let's see if we can keep climbing. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next time.